Hello friends, welcome to Fairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current affairs of 30th of April 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and most important current affairs. So watch this video till last, but I'm requesting you all the students that you have to like this video, you have to share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. Guys, you can download our application. Application name is Careers Cloud. Remember, the application is uh, Careers Cloud and you can download this application from the description box link. If we put a downloading link in the description box, you can download with very simple method. After downloading, you can log in with your email ID and after login, you can click on the crack current fair section and after clicking, you can subscribe for one year as well as for two years. It means you can subscribe for 12 months as well as for 24 months. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see the price, you will definitely surprise. But what we are providing under this subscription we are providing daily current fairs in the daily current fair section we are providing three type of the current fairs one is detailed current fair of particular day next is the question and answer format of the current fair of particular day and third is the quiz section it means you can attempt daily quiz on our application Next is the weekly section and in the weekly section we are again providing the three sections according to week. One is detailed current fair of particular week. Next is the question and answer format of the current fair of particular week and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. Next is the monthly section and uh, this is very important because in the monthly section we are providing four type of the PDFs. One is related to study PDF. It means all the detailed current fair and theoretical current fair will be provided under this PDF. And to revise this type of current fair we are also also providing question and answer format of the particular month current fair so that you can revise again and again. Next we are also providing the best 100 current fairs it means the top 100 current fairs that should be also be provided in the format of question and answer so that you can revise again and again. Last is the pocket pdf this is a, a one liner and the two liner theoretical format current fair you can revise before your exam very quickly. So guys this is daily weekly and the monthly current fair but we are also providing the smart pdfs. Smart pdf stands for topic wise pdf. We are covering 20 most important topics and we are providing topic wise current fairs in the pdf format if your one particular topic is weak or you just want to revise just one particular topic before your exam then you can pick this topic wise pdf and you can revise any type of the topic that are most important for your exam Next, we are also providing the banking aspirant section. It means if you are a banking aspirant, then we are providing banking awareness section. Uh, and in the banking awareness section, we are providing three type of things. One is detailed current fair only related to banking and economy. Question and answer format of the current fair only related to banking and economy. And also quiz section, which you can attempt on our application and check that how much banking aware awareness you can retain for long time period. Next is the exam PDF. This is very important because you can revise all current fairs of particular year under one PDF that is known as exam PDF. It means all the passing months and all the passing days we are covering uh, under one PDF. And uh, if uh, suppose your exam is tomorrow and you have to just revise all the current fairs of 2021 till date, then you have to just pick this exam PDF and you can revise all the current fairs. Next is special current fair. Special stands for budget and economic survey. Uh, we are providing detailed budget and economic survey and also the expected question and answer which examiner can ask related to budget and economic survey. And guys, if you are preparing for your central government exam, you are definitely preparing for respective state exam. So that's why we are covering every state and UT so that you can cover state current fair and you can enhance your performance in your state exam. So guys, there is no different different subscription for all these things. There is only one uh, subscription. You have to just download our application that is careers cloud. You have to log in with your email ID and you have to click on this crack current fair section and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two years. You have to check uh, uh, this uh, subscription price, but I am assuring you that price is so, so much low and you will definitely uh, surprise to see the price. And guys, we are providing 10% extra discount on that minimal price. If you use this code ASH10, then you will get 10% extra discount. And if you have any query, then you can reach us on this email ID that is support at the rate affairs cloud.com. You can email on this uh, email ID and you can call on this number. If you have particular query, you can also comment in any video so that I can personally answer you uh, your query. And guys, let's start today's current fair that is 30th of April 2021. And I'm again requesting you all the students that you have to like this video because we have a target of 700 plus. You have to subscribe this channel and you have to share this video as maximum as possible. So let's begin today's session with the most important question section. And here is our first question. Which country became the first country to adopt self-driving cars on motorways? That is a new kind of thing, self-driving cars on motorway. And this country become the first country who will adopt this type of the system. Mark this question in the most important section. 
So answer of this question is very simple. Answer of this question is United Kingdom. So C is the answer. It means the United Kingdom government become the first country in the globe to permit self-driving cars on motorways after the announcement of its plan in recent uh, like 27 or 28th of April 2021. And uh, they will regulate the use of self-driving vehicles at slow speeds because they will test first and uh, they will test on the slow speeds on the motorways. So you can uh, see this UK becomes the first country to announce regulation of use of self-driving vehicles at slow speeds on the motorways. And you can also see this United Kingdom government become the first country on the globe to permit self-driving cars on motorways and guys you have to remember in order to make safe use of the self-driving vehicle system uh, the transport ministry of the united kingdom was working on the specific wording to update the country's highway code it means they have to just update the country's highway code so that the self-drive uh, uh, vehicles can be safe and for keeping the cars within a lane the technology called automated lane keeping system will be used and even uh, uh, this United Kingdom government has mandated the uh, um, mandated the automated lane keeping system uses for the motorways at a speed below 60 km per hour. 60 km per hour. They just restricted this. And by the year of 2035, the UK forecast to have 40% of the new cars with self-driving capability. This is a new kind of things and they will definitely create a, uh, sk uh, skilled jobs and uh, according to United Kingdom, they will create almost uh, 38,000 skilled jobs. 38,000 skilled jobs. Even uh, one official spokesman of the United Kingdom government said that United Kingdom is planning to allow self-driving cars in motorways by 2021 itself. So this is a good news and uh, even this is a new kind of thing for the uh, um, uh, automobile industry. So guys, remember about United Kingdom, capital is London, currency is pound sterling and prime minister is Boris Johnson. So remember all these things. Now we can move to the next question. Which Indian company listed in the Times magazine's first ever list known as the Time 100 most influential company. This is the first time that uh, Time magazine uh, listed a uh, 100 uh, companies list which is known as the Times 100 most influential companies list and there are two companies who listed under this uh, most influential companies 100 list. One is the Geo platform, second is the Baiju's. It means answer of this question is both A and C. So mark the most important keyword Times 100 most influential company. One is related to the education, innovation in education and second is the Geo platform. If that is also awarded under the innovation category. So you can see this Baiju's and Geo proud to be included in the inaugural Times 100 most influential companies listed and Geo platforms and Baiju's both are included first ever list of the 100 most influential uh, um, companies and which is an expansion of the Times 100 franchise. So guys you can see here Reliance Industries Limited Technology Wing Geo platforms and e-learning startup Baiju's have made it to the Time magazine first ever list Times 100 most influential companies and Geo platforms was listed under the innovation category and listed for leading digital transformation in India, digital transformation of India. Even Geo uh, platforms was listed along with the companies, international companies like Zoom, uh, Adidas, TikTok, Ikea, Netflix. So uh, Geo was uh, basically placed along with these companies. And Geo platform is also working with the Facebook to develop a WhatsApp based e-commerce platform. So guys, remember, I'm giving you a new news that Geo is basically working with Facebook working with Facebook to develop a WhatsApp based e-commerce platform, e-commerce platform and Google to roll out low cost 5G smartphones, smartphones. So guys, remember, Geo is tying up with Facebook for the WhatsApp chat based system uh, in the e-commerce platform. And Geo is also uh, tying up with the Google for the low, uh, low cost 5G smartphones and the magazine also listed geo platform for leading digital transformation in India. So remember about these things. These are again very, very important. Now, Baiju's was listed under the disruptors category. It means uh, they are uh, basically categorized alongside with the Tesla, Huawei uh, or Huawei. Uh, Airbnb. So these are the companies basically which are listed along with the Baiju's and Baiju's has also created market outside India, including the United States of America, United Kingdom, Indonesia, Mexico and the Brazil. In India, as a part of the expansion, Baiju's acquired recently Akash Institution that is very famous brand in the medical industry. Uh, Baiju's acquired education, Akash Educational Services, a leading test preparation school for almost $1 billion. We covered this news actually. And the Baiju's uh, has also acquired the white junior hat remember white junior hat i am hoping that you have seen the ad uh, where rithik roshan is basically the brand investor of this white junior hat 
an application that teaches kids to coding and it also acquired educational game maker osmo but it was a very uh, uh, you can say the old news in 2019 um, this uh, baiju has acquired this educational game maker osmo so guys remember these things because these are related to geo platforms and the baiju these are the very influential companies of india which was uh, listed by the uh, times first 100 influential companies list and guys remember about geo platform geo platform basically established in 2019 everyone knows this parent company is reliance industry founder is mukesh ambani headquarters in mumbai so that is very simple baiju is very important because it was established in 2011 and the founder is baiju ravindran remember uh, uh, baiju ravindran and headquarters in bengaluru karnataka so remember all these things because these are again very very important now we are moving to next question who is appointed as finance secretary? So very simple question and mark under the most important question. Who is appointed as finance secretary? Answer is TV Somanathan. So answer of this question is TV Somanathan. First of all, guys, you have to remember that there are four secretaries in the Ministry of Finance or you can say the under the Ministry of Finance. One is secretary of Department of Financial Services. Financial Services. Second is the Department of Investment. Department of Investment. Next is the Department of Economic Affairs. Department of Economic Affairs. I am repeating myself. Uh, one is the Department of Financial Services. Second is Department of Investment. Next is Department of Economic, uh, Economic Affairs. And the fourth one is the Department of Expenditure. Expenditure. So these are the four departments which uh, uh, comes under the Ministry of Finance. And each department have different secretary. Like uh, if I am talking about financial services, then uh, the secretary is uh, Devashish Panda. And if I am talking about the investment department of investment, then it is uh, Tuhin Kanta Pandey. And the secretary of Department of Economic Affairs is Ajay Seth. We recently covered this question that Economic Affairs is Ajay Seth. Ajay Seth. But uh, the expenditure secretary, that was TV uh, Somanathan, who was recently appointed as finance secretary because in the Ministry of Finance, the senior most secretary among these four secretaries in the Ministry of Finance is designated as the finance secretary. So he is currently the senior most out of these four secretaries. So it is TV Somanathan. So guys, remember, he is a basically 1987 batch IS officer of Tamil Nadu cadre and Somanathan was awarded the gold medal for the best IS trainee uh, of his uh, services. Remember this. And Somanathan was appointed as the Secretary Department of Expenditure uh, in Finance Ministry in 2019, December 2019. So prior to that, he was also serving as the Principal Secretary in the Tamil Nadu Kader. He also served as the Joint Secretary in the Prime Minister Office. So guys, this is the information you have to learn. So Finance Secretary is a static question that is TV Somanathan. But other options are again very important. Ajay Seth, we recently discussed he is currently the... Uh, um, Secretary of the Department of Economic Affairs under the Ministry of Finance, but we also covered one news yesterday that he was also appointed as the non-official director of Central Board of RBI. We recently covered this question about Ajay Seth. Remember, two positions held by Ajay Seth. One is the Secretary of Department of Economic Affairs under the Ministry of Finance, and second, he was recently appointed as the non-official director non-official director of the center board of rb in the april 2021 next is ajay kumar bhalla very important personality he is currently the home secretary of india remember under the ministry of home next ajay bhushan pandey again very important name why because he was former finance secretary so remember the former finance secretary was ajay bhushan pandey new is tv somanathan ajay Seth. two positions held by ajay Seth. next is the ajay kumar balla currently the home secretary now we can move to the next question but you can see the picture of tv somanathan who is appointed as the finance secretary so guys this is most important question and if you are a banking aspirant then this is the most most important question this question will come hundred percent hundred percent now we are moving to next question what will be the name of china's new permanent space station so china renamed its permanent space station earlier it was known as chinese large modular space station but now they renamed it and they renamed it as tayan gong space station so guys remember tayan gong space station is the new name of china's permanent space station you can see this picture and china also launched one robot prototype that is neo 01 and it is capable of catching space debris so guys, there are basically two questions under this one question. One is the name of the China's permanent space station. Second is, what is the name of the robot prototype which was launched by China to collect the debris in the space? And this is NEO-01. So you can see China's National Space Administration, that is the space agency of the China, launched the core module named known as the Taina or Heavenly Harmony for uh, uh, for its new permanent space station called Tayan Gong Space Station. 
and this is the first of its 11 missions needed for constructing the new space station in china and all these 11 missions will be completed in november 2022 according to the schedule of the uh, 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 china space agency because this is the first mission that is known as tiane and or known as the heavenly harmony and last mission is basically the in november 2022 it means all the all the uh, space station requirements will be completed by the year of uh, uh, by the end of 2022 and the module contains living quarters for the crew members of the tian gong so it means uh, the chinese astronauts will live on the station for 6 months at a time this is the belief of the chinese space agency and guys remember the china space station is expected to be ready by the year of 2022 why this is important because at present the only current space station is the uh, international space station international space station and it was started with the collaboration of the russia russia usa canada uh europe and japan so these are the five basically uh, four countries and the one is the continent russia us uh, canada japan and the uh, uh europe and china was excluded from participating in it but china want to uh, include but uh, china was excluded and international space station what is the important thing that international space station is set to be retired after 2024 after 2024 this international space station will retire which would potentially leave this tian gong space station as the only space station in the earth orbit so this is a very good news for china because uh, only one space station uh, in uh, on the orbit earth orbit and uh, it belongs to china and china is aiming to transform into a major space power by the year of 2030 so this is a very huge thing for the china and guys remember about this news like neo01 uh, Uh, this uh, th- uh, you you know thousands of satellites have been launched globally and they outlive their use and they end up as junk and pose risk to the other operating satellites so neo01 a 30 kg robot aims to collect these debris and it will burn the debris with its electric propulsion system and apart from cleaning the space debris the robot will peer into the deep space to observe small celestial bodies so you have to just remember the name that is neo01 one and guys remember uh, china space uh, china national space administration which is known as cnsa and uh, administrator you don't have to remember headquarters in beijing china so these things you have to remember but other options are again very important one is the mir space station this is important because this space station belongs to ussr earlier because it was launched in 1986 and uh, after the um, you can say the bifurcation of ussr it uh, goes to russia or you can say the roscosmos uh, space agency which belongs to russia but it retired in 2001 but you have to remember mir space station belongs to uh, russia and next is uh, salute or the salute space station it was also belongs to ussr or you can say the russia salute there are uh, so many types of the salute like 1 2 3 and total are 7 it was also uh, launched in the phases like first was launched in 1971 and uh, it was not so much successful but last one was launched in 1977 and 1982 and uh, it retired in 1991 so it is not so much important next is sky lab space station this belongs to united states of america sky lab space station it belongs to united states of america so guys remember sky lab and it is a nasa space station it was launched in 1973 but uh, it was retired in 1979 so these are the older space station belongs to the russia or the china uh, or the usa but this is the new like tiangong space station it will be launched in 2022 it will be completed in 2022 so here is next question united kingdom will get world's first more powerful weather climate forecasting super computer by 2022 earlier we were talking about the uh, self driven cars it was again uh, united kingdom and now uh, united kingdom will get most powerful weather climate forecasting super computer by the year of 2022 but to build this computer for uh, this computing applications this united kingdom is collaborated with which company so you have to answer me the name of the company and name of company is microsoft so answer of this question is d so it means microsoft and the united kingdom uh, is collaborating to build the world most powerful weather and climate forecasting sup- supercomputer in the united uh, kingdom and it is by the mit office it means the meteorological department or meteorological office of the united kingdom and you can also see this microsoft and the uh, united kingdom meteorological office are collaborating to build the world most powerful weather and climate forecasting supercomputer in the united kingdom 
And guys, it will definitely enhance weather and climate forecasting. And the state of art uh, supercomputer will be developed at a cost of 1.2 billion pounds. It means almost 12,400 crore rupees. And this is a part of United Government commitment towards achieving net zero emission by 2050. This is the United Kingdom target to achieve net zero emission by the year of 2050. And the capability of this com supercomputer is one of the world most environmental sustainable because it is powered by 100% renewable energy delivered through market leading energy efficiency. And guys, remember the data generated by supercomputer will be used to provide a more accurate warning about severe weather conditions. And and this will definitely help to build resilience and protect the infrastructure and the people of the United Kingdom from the impact of storms, flood and snow. And uh, when United Kingdom will use uh, this type of the supercomputer and uh, this country can open uh, the facilities to other countries also. So remember, this will definitely uh, improve the or build the resi resilience and protect the infrastructure and also uh, also help the people of the united kingdom from the impacts of storms floods and the snow so guys remember these things because these are very very important you have to just remember the name of the country united kingdom and name of the company that is microsoft now we can move to next question next is a very important questions guys you have to like this video we want 700 plus likes you have to subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform and you have to share this video as maximum as possible so let's begin uh, with the very important questions here is the first question india and which country will establish two plus two ministerial dialogue this is very important question because earlier india and the three countries already established two plus two ministerial dialogue and these three countries are united states of america everyone knows japan is there already India signed uh, 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue mechanism and uh, one is Australia. One is Australia. So all three are the quad countries uh, which belongs to a quad group like India, USA, Japan and Australia. These are the quad countries and uh, with all three quad countries, India has an agreement of 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. And what is this means 2 plus 2? It means one is the foreign uh, dialogue, foreign minister dialogue and second is the defense minister level dialogue. So uh, there is a two persons from Indian side, two persons from the uh, uh, other country side. So this will become 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. So remember what is 2 plus 2? And now this country is Russia and guys remember Russia is the fourth country russia is the fourth country and first non quad country first non quad country uh, member country which india has established the 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue mechanism and the establishment of this mechanism was announced after a telephonic conversation between the prime minister narendra modi ji and president of russia vladimir putin so you can see this india russia to establish 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue between the foreign and the defense minister and you can see the vladimir putin here you can see the narendra modi here and guys remember russia and india agreed to review bilateral cooperation in the areas of spa uh, space exploration and and uh, uh, renew energy sector, especially the renew energy sector and the hydrogen economy. And defense is the key pillar of the partnership between the two countries because Russia has trained four Indian astronauts recently. Remember, Russia has trained four Indian astronauts for a uh, Gaganyaan mission, which is India's first manned mission in the space. That is very, very important. And uh, Russian President Putin is set to visit India in 2021 for the annual Indian-Russian bilateral summit if this COVID crisis overs. So, Remember, Russia has so far sent 22 tons of equipment, including the 20 oxygen production units, 75 ventilators and 150 medical monitors and 2 lakh packets of medicine. This is a huge thing and this is uh, uh, only done by the Russia. This is basically helping hands uh, uh, given by the Russia. So guys, remember these things and recently one medicine from the Russia that is known as Sputnik. This is again very important question. Sputnik 5 it is known as. So uh, Sputnik 5, uh, which was recently approved by India and the Russian vaccine will be manufactured in India for the use in India and Russia and the other countries and it is set to arrive in India already arrived basically in April 2021 because today is the last day of the April so that's why uh, it is already arrived. So this Sputnik 5 is basically the third vaccine that India has given approval after the uh, Covishield. Remember, this is the very important question because I covered this question so many times. Uh, one is the Covishield which was produced by the Serum Institute of India and uh, second is the Covaxin. Covaxin is produced by Bharat Biotech and third one is the Sputnik 
five. So remember these uh, 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 questions because these are very important. And recently in October 2020, India hosted uh, the, this two plus two ministerial dialogue summit with United States of America. And from Indian side, it was Rajnath Singh because he was defense minister and uh, external affairs minister was Subramanian Jai Shankar. They attended this meeting. So remember this. And remember about Russia. Its capital is Moscow. Currency is Russian ruble. And president is Vladimir Putin. Now we can move to the next question. Project Dantak. Dantak completed 60 years. And this project is related to which country? So two or three things are very important under this question. One is the name of the project by itself, Dantak. It is a project of border road organization. Remember, border roads organization of India. And this project is to establish, uh, um, uh, to establish or you can say the construct motorable roads in the kingdom of Bhutan. So guys, answer of this question is Bhutan. And this project was launched by uh, the king of the Bhutan at the time. And it was launched by 20 uh, in 24th on 24th of april 1961 yes because now in 2021 it completed total 60 years and this project was aimed at constructing the motorable roads in the kingdom and uh, this project was then uh, started by the prime minister of india prime minister jawaharlal nehruji so <laughs> remember and it involved the construction of the paro airport uh, for bhutan and so many infrastructural project so you can see this this project is dantak and it was established on 24th of april 1961 by his majesty the third king of bhutan and then prime minister of jawaharlal nehru and major projects are like Paro Airport, uh, Zonfula Airfield, Thimphu, and uh, uh, Rashigang Highway, uh, Telecommunication, Hydropower Infrastructure, so many colleges, and house estate buildings. And uh, to commemorate its, its uh, Golden Jubilee in Bhutan, Indian ambassador to Bhutan, uh, like uh, Shrimati Ruchira Kamboj was there, and uh, it was also attended by uh, Indian military training team, and also the uh, border road organization personnel. So guys, you have to just remember the project name, that is the Dantak, and it is just to uh, construct the motorable roads in the kingdom of Bhutan. So here, country is important, Bhutan. Now we can move to next question. But you have to remember the uh, capital of Bhutan, that is Thimpu, and the currency is Bhutanese Nagultram. N-G-U-L-T-R-U-M. That is the currency of Bhutan, Nagultram. Now we can move to the next question. Which bank launched digital banking service for merchants known as the Merchant Stack? This was basically a uh, older project of this bank, but uh, the banking service for merchant uh, will be launched under this project that is the Merchant Stack. So earlier this Merchant Stack was known as ICICI Stack. Now it is known as Merchant Stack, but uh, earlier it was known as ICIC Stack. So that's why it was started by ICIC Bank. So it means ICIC Bank launched this Merchant Stack as a digital banking services as a continuation of its ICIC Stack for retail merchants, especially for the micro, small and medium enterprises and you can say the entrepreneurs. So what will be the main objective? The main objective is just to enable the merchants such as uh, uh, grocers, supermarkets, uh, large retail store chains, Karyana businessmen, online businessmen, large e-commerce firms to serve their customers continuously under pandemic using contactless banking services. So this is the main initiative of this merchant stack or the ICIC stack. So you can see here, ICIC bank launched this digital banking service that is known as the merchant stack. Or you can also see this, ICIC bank launched this merchant stack a digital banking services in continuation of this ICIC stack it means the older version was ICIC stack it is just to help the micro small and medium enterprises and uh, it is just to uh, cover all the all the uh, merchants to serve their customers continuously under this uh, pandemic crisis using contactless banking services so what they are providing uh, uh, under the merchant stack so first of all a new account will be created which will be known as super merchant current account super merchant current account and uh, two instant credit facilities based on the point of sale machine or the transactions will be delivered. One is the merchant overdraft. It means merchant can borrow some money as uh, in the account and uh, one is the express credit. It means they can use this express credit to expand their business. Next, uh, third thing they are providing digital store management facility to support merchants in the online business. It means the one digital store will be created so that maximum to maximum online business can be enhanced. The loyalty reward program is also will be there and it will be with the alliance of the major e-commerce and the digital market platform which will provide the offers to the customers and there will be one application this is known as insta remember i-n-s-t-a insta biz 
Insta biz stands for businessman. It is the benefits of the merchant stack. If you want the benefits of merchant stack, then you have to download this application that is Insta biz application. The application will be accessible on ICIC corporate internet banking platform uh, also. So guys, remember the bank has stated that existence of two crore merchants in India with 780 billion, almost 780 billion dollar in value transaction in 2020. So this is huge uh, market cover which will be covered by ICIC bank through this uh, merchant stack platform and recently ICIC bank launched the mobile application insta fx we already covered this point so many times but it is launched in january 2021 and this application allows authorized money changers who are the partners of the bank to help customers of any bank to obtain ICIC bank forex prepaid card it means this card will be provided to any type of the customer either uh, the customer of ICIC or not but the money changer can provide this type of the ICIC bank forex prepaid card to any type of the customer through this application uh, that is known as the Insta uh, Forex application. The Forex partners can complete the know your customer verification and verification uh, of customers digitally and on a real time basis. So ICIC Bank becomes the first bank in India to offer such a facility to the money changer. So it is just for the money changer so that uh, um, so that uh, any type of the currency can be uh, covered under this ICIC Bank Forex prepaid card. Now here the most important thing here is the ICIC Bank. You have to remember this uh, bank was started in 1995. It was uh, basically started established in 1994 but it was uh, started working in 1995 and its uh, headquarters is in Mumbai and uh, MD and CEO is Sandeep Bakshi you have to remember this Sandeep Bakshi and tagline is hum hai na khayal aapka hum hai na khayal aapka now we can move to the next question who won the gold medal in archery world cup so there are two things you have to remember this world cup is hosted by which country and second who won the gold medal First of all, this Archery World Cup is hosted by Guatemala. So guys, you have to remember this is hosted by uh, G-A, sorry, G-U-A-T-E-M-A-L-A. That is Guatemala. And uh, what is the currency of Guatemala? Currency of uh, Guatemala is Quetzal. Q-U-E-T-Z-A-L. That is the currency of Guatemala, Quetzal. And uh, Guatemala is in uh, Central America and its capital is Guatemala City. And who won this uh, uh, gold medal? Uh, they are known as basically power couple because they are hus uh, husband wife. So answer of this question is Atanu Das and uh, Deepika Kumari. So answer of this question is both A and C. So guys, uh, Atanu Das and Deepika Kumari won the men and women individual recurve gold medals respectively in the Archery World Cup stage one in the Guatemala which will be held in 25th of April 2021 and Atanu beat basically Daniel Castro of the Spain and Deepika defeated Mackenzie Brown but you don't have to remember uh, uh, which persons are defeated so you have to just remember the Atanu Das and the Deepika uh, Kumari both are husband wife and both are known as the power couple in the archery uh, field and uh, uh, they won the gold medal in the individual category Atanu also won the bronze medal in the mixed category with the Ankita so this is not so much important but you have to remember the gold medals they won so guys this is uh, just a very important question because this is archery world cup so you have to just remember the names of the player and examiner can ask, uh, also ask that atanu das and deepika kumari belongs to which game so this is again very important they belongs to archery now we can move to next question india and which country signed a pact on customs cooperation and mutual administrative assistance in custom matters so mark this question in the very important section, but uh, this type of the pact will help in the availability of information for the prevention and investigation of the customs offenses. It will definitely facilitate trade and ensure seamless clearance of goods traded between the two countries and this countries again, United Kingdom. So today we will discuss United, what we are discussing United Kingdom three times. One is for the uh, like self-drive cars, self-drive cars. Second is basically for the supercomputer for the uh, weather system. And third, we are discussing with the uh, uh, custom matters. So this pact will help in the availability of information for the prevention and investigation of the custom offenses. And this is United Kingdom. So you can see here, cabinet approves signing pact with the United Kingdom for info sharing, prevent custom offenses. It means when you are uh, trading goods and the goods are going from one country to another, then there are some custom offenses. So to, uh, uh, to prevent and uh, uh, to prevent and uh, manage this these type of the custom offenses this type of the pact is very very important so guys you can also see this this pact will help in the availability of information for the prevention and investigation of the custom offenses and it will facilitate trade and ensure seamless clearance of the goods traded between the two countries and this pact will be signed on behalf of the governments of the two countries after approval by the respective government even it will enter into force from that uh, day 
uh, of the month and even you can say the first day of the month following signature when they signed and uh, it will start and the agreement addresses the concern and requirement of the indian customs and the agreement uh, specially uh, addresses the concern and requirement of indian custom in the area of uh, exchange of information on the correctness of the custom value tariff class, uh, classification and origin of goods traded between the two countries so it aims to ensure proper application of the custom laws prevention and investigation of the custom offences and facilitate legitimate trade so the main focus is on legitimate trade between the two countries so the draft agreement has been finalized already by the custom administration of the two trades but there is one fact you have to remember in india central board of indirect taxes central board of indirect taxes and custom is responsible for the formulation on the collection of custom central excise duty and it comes under the department of revenue ministry of finance and who is currently the uh, chairman of this uh, cbic chairman is m ajit kumar m ajit kumar and its headquarters is in new delhi so guys recent latest news you have to remember india and the united kingdom agreed to set up a joint task force consisting of designed or the designated higher education organizations from both countries to work towards mutual recognition of academic qualification over the next year it means uh, the education qualification which will be uh, basically recognized by both the countries and then uh, these two countries are basically setting up a joint task force so that uh, the examination qualification or the academic qualification can be recognized with the both the countries and the same education qualification will be recognized by the united kingdom and uh, united kingdom recognition united kingdom education qualification will be recognized by india so this will be the main target so you have to just remember this and united kingdom we already uh, covered this point so many times today prime minister is boris johnson capital is london currency is uh, pound sterling and guys uh, uh, united kingdom is not basically one country united kingdom is a combination of england scotland northern ireland and wales so these are the four different different territories if we combine then it will become the united kingdom but if you only combine the england wales and scotland then it will become the great britain remember it will become great britain now we can move to the next question So guys here is Indian bank signed an MOU with which company to provide telecom services to the bank so it is very simple question answer of this question is BSNL Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited so it means indian bank signed a memorandum of understanding with bharat sanchar nigam limited to provide telecom services to the bank at a competitive rate and the mou was signed in the presence of executive directors of the indian bank and the chief general manager of the bsnl chennai telephones because uh, uh, the headquarter of uh, this indian bank is in chennai tamil nadu so indian bank already uses the services of bsnl and mtnl 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 stands for mahanagar telephone nigam limited and mtnl is also a uh, fully subsidiary of the bsnl you can also remember this so indian bank signs mou with the bsnl this is the keyword you have to remember so don't uh, uh, remember anything else and uh, this sign for the competitive exam uh, competitive rates bsnl is the only telecom service that connects branches and the atms in rural and the remote location across india so this is a very important thing that only telecom service provider who is connecting branches of the uh, banks and the atms in the rural and the remote locations across india so at present bsnl and its subsidiary mtnl are connecting more than 5000 branches and atms of indian bank including the allahabad bank which are recently merged in the india bank so you have to remember this and indian bank md and co is padamja chandru padamja chandru he is currently the md and co of indian bank and uh, headquarters is in tamil nadu and uh, founded in 1907 and what about bharat sanchar nigam limited or you can say the bsnl uh, bsnl was uh, uh, basically a um, government uh, company but uh, it it comes in the department of telecom services and came into force uh, on in 2000 and uh, its uh, ch chairman and managing director is Uh, Praveen Kumar, Praveen Kumar. Remember, Praveen Kumar. I think full name is the Purvar. I don't. I am not sure, but uh, Praveen Kumar is the name. Headquarters in New Delhi. So you have to remember this. Now we can move to the next question. There is uh, nothing else. Uh, next question is who pointed as MD and C of the Axis Bank? Why I am not covering this question in the most important question because this person. already is currently the uh, md and co of the axis bank it means the question is who is reappointed as md and co of the axis bank so this is not so much important because so many students know that who is currently the md and co uh, he is just reappointed for next 3 years and answer of this question is very simple answer is amitab choudhury so guys remember amitab choudhury is the answer so amitab choudhury as the managing director and chief executive officer of axis bank for a period of 3 years uh, it means his time period is now increased for the 3 years uh, from 
फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जैन टू टू थर्टी फर्स्ट दिसंबर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इट मीन्स फुल ईयर ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू फुल ईयर ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री फुल ईयर ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर सो इस टाइम पीरियड इज नाउ इंक्रीज एंड रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड शेयर होल्डर्स ऑफ द बैंक ऑल्सो अप्रूव दिस अपॉइंटमेंट सो वैस रिमेंबर एंड अमिताभ चौधरी वॉज अपॉइंटेड एज एम डी एंड सी ओ ऑफ द एक्सिस बैंक इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन फॉर टाइम पीरियड ऑफ थ्री ईयर्स बट नाउ अगेन द टाइम पीरियड इज एक्सटेंडेड फॉर थ्री ईयर्स सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एक्सिस बैंक एक्सिस बैंक वॉज इस्टेब्लिश इन नाइनटीन Uh, its tagline is Bharti ka naam zindagi and headquarters in Mumbai, Maharashtra. But other appointments you can uh, see here. These are again very very important. One you can see here, Senapati Chris Gopala Krishnan. Uh, remember uh, this appointment because we covered this question in the most important question that he was the first chairperson of the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. Reserve Bank Innovation Hub. Remember this. Next is J K Shivan. Again, very important uh, personality and very important appointment. You have to again remember this. He was currently appointed as the M D and C E O of Dhan Lakshmi Bank. Dhan Lakshmi Bank. Next is Vishavir Hoja. We covered uh, this person so many times, so many times because he was recently appointed as M D and C E O of R B L Bank. of RBL bank and this is a basically a uh, news of january 2021 we covered this in january 2021 so we covered all these things and you can see the picture of the amitabh choudhary and we are moving to the next question drdo conducted successful maiden trial of python 5 missile it is an dash missile so very simple question uh, this python 5 is basically air to air missile and python 5 uses the technique of israel missile so remember it is it uses the technique of uh, israel so remember air to air missile so you can see here python 5 and it looks like uh, this python 5 drdo conducts maiden trial of python 5 air to air missile and drdo conducts successful maiden trial of this missile python 5 missile is an infrared guided missile you have to remember this keyword infrared guided missile and it is manufactured by the rafael advanced defense system of israel because it is uh, uh, built by the israel technology that's why it is built by this rafael advanced defense system which is belongs to rafael and its range is 20 km so you have to remember these three things which are very very important one is the name of missile that is python second it is a air to air missile third uh, uh, this is a infrared guided missile it is uh, basically manufactured by israel company that is rafael defense uh, system and third its range is 20 km and last thing you can uh, also remember that you can see this plane this is basically tejas tejas or you can say the light combat aircraft tejas and the missile would add to the air to air combat capability of india's indigenously tejas or you can say the light combat aircraft tejas and uh, both the missiles or you can say uh, this um, python 5 missile can be fired from tejas aircraft of the aeronautical development agency it means it can be uh, fired from this uh, tejas aircraft so this is very important now we can move to the next section and it is the important question section you have to provide a 700 plus likes you have to subscribe this channel you have to share this video as maximum as possible so here is the question which state approved the hike in ashirwad scheme which aid from 21000 to 51000 it means earlier under the ashirwad scheme the aid was given by the state government was 21000 but now they increased it to 51000 and the answer of this question is punjab so guys remember the answer is punjab because ashirwad scheme or it is also known as shagun scheme of the state government uh, which was started by the congress government or you can say it was earlier started by the shromni akali dal government of the punjab but now uh, currently uh, it is uh, ruled by the state is ruled by congress government and uh, chief minister is captain amrinder singh captain amrinder singh and the governor is governor is uh, um, vp singh badnor so remember vp singh badnor vijender pal singh badnor he is currently the governor of punjab so you can also see this this is a punjab cabinet and you can see here is uh, uh, captain amrinder singh captain amrinder singh so now you can see here punjab cabinet approves hike in the ashirwad scheme but this ashirwad scheme will be implemented will be implemented from 1st july from 1st july 2021 and there are two or three uh, points which are very important and if you belongs to punjab then this is the most important thing you have to remember this was known as the shagun scheme provides financial assistance for the wedding of women from scheduled caste christian backward class women daughters of the widows 
of any cast and the scheduled cast widows so guys remember there are so many categories included in this shogun scheme one is uh, uh, the scheduled cast christian backward class woman daughter of widow of any cast and scheduled cast widows and whose wedding is there then state government will provide one time assistance to that girl and this will be 51000 it, it will be implemented from 1st july 2021 and the scheme is also applicable for the muslim girls now for the uh, age of 18 or the above and the aid under the scheme is limited only to two girls from one family not more than two girls and the family with an annual income of not more than 32790 from all sources of eligible to avail the benefits and so there are two or three conditions like uh, only two girls can avail this scheme and uh, uh, the income the annual income of the family cannot be more than 32790 and it, it it will be applicable only to uh, these categories which i told you and it is also known as the shagun scheme and it is also uh, for the muslim girls who are above the age of 18 or above and earlier in 2017 when congress government was formed in punjab they also hiked uh, this uh, uh, from uh, 15000 to 21000 now they hiked from 21000 to 51000 so it is a one time assistance provided by the state government so you have to remember this now we are moving to the next question which country served as the country coordinator for asian india dialogue relations so guys, India is basically not a member of ASEAN. So any country who is not a member of ASEAN and uh, want to become a uh, dialogue partner, then uh, this country uh, need to require uh, one coordinator which belongs to the ASEAN uh, countries member. And guys, uh, the ASEAN country member who is uh, currently the country coordinator of uh, Asian India dialogue relation that is Thailand. So uh, Thailand was basically served as the country coordinator for in, uh, Asian India dialogue relation for the last three years. It means from 2018 to 21, Thailand was the country coordinator of Asian India dialogue. But uh, from 2021 to 24, it will be Singapore. So guys remember Singapore is also a member of Asian. So that's why uh, uh, from 2021 to 24, uh, it means for another three year, Singapore will be the next country coordinator of india asian relations and guys remember uh, this uh, meeting is also attended by the 10 asian member states because you can see here the picture of uh, one lady riva gangli das co-chaired the 23rd asian india senior official meeting and she is currently appointed as the uh, uh, secretary of uh, uh, ministry of uh, external affairs in the east side so remember from the east side and uh, you can also see this thailand served as the country coordinator for the asian india dialogue singapore will the next Next country coordinate and uh, India proposed to celebrate the year of 2022 as the Asian India friendship year. This is a very important thing because all the Asian countries and this proposal is accepted by all the Asian country members and Asian official welcomed India's proposal to celebrate 2022 as Asian India friendship year and 2022 marks the 30th anniversary of the Asian India sectoral partnership because India joined as an Asian sectoral partner in uh, 1992 and uh, it will be the 30 year celebration and 25th anniversary of dialogue partnership uh, 20th anniversary of the summit level partnership and 10 year of the strategic partnership so there are so many anniversaries but uh, you have to remember it is the 30th anniversary of the sectoral partnership of india and the asean and india uh, and the other participants also discussed uh, uh, to uh, for the implementing the india asean plan of the action from 2021 to 25 because they also discuss how we can strengthen the asean india strategic partnership and their cooperation in the fight against the covid-19 pandemic which is the current very famous issue and guys remember about asean asean was basically founded in 1967 it is, it is basically economic units and it promotes government cooperation between the southeast asian nations and how many countries are member 10 countries are member like Brunei, cambodia indonesia laos uh, malaysia myanmar philippines uh, singapore thailand and the vietnam and it is the india's fourth largest trading partner remember asian is the india's fourth largest trading partner because india exports to asian almost around 11.28 percent 11.28 percent exporter export from india only to asean so guys this is very important you have to remember about the asean things and the current chairmanship of asean from of 2021 goes to brunei to brunei and what is the theme of asean chairmanship of uh, uh, brunei the chairmanship of uh, asean theme of 2021 is we care we prepare we prosper we care we prepare we prosper so you have to remember this is the theme of the asean 2021 and who is the secretary general of current uh, asean and the secretary general from 2018 to 2021 is dato lim d a t o dato lim 
Jok Hoi, full name is, and headquarters in Jakarta, Indonesia. So guys, remember all these things because these are very, very important. Now we can move to the next section and it is our one liner important point. Here is the first point. Norway contributes 20 million, 20 million NOK to India for COVID-19 relief fund. So here is the country important that is uh, Norway because so many countries are participating, uh, 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 participating in funding uh, India so that uh, India can resolve this problem of COVID-19 because now so many cases are rising and uh, India is in the trouble situation. So like we yesterday discussed that Google also donating so much money. Uh, Microsoft is also donating. Even uh, Asian Development Bank is also lending money to India. Now it is uh, Norway and uh, Norway is uh, basically contributing 20 million, 20 million kroners. Kroner is basically a currency of the Norway and it is almost about 18 crore rupees if we are uh, converting into Indian currency. And New Zealand is also providing 1 million New Zealand dollar and uh, uh, Canada is also pledging to donate one, uh, sorry, 10 million, 10 million USD to Indian Red Cross to support the medical emergencies in India due to COVID-19. So Canada, New Zealand, Norway, Google and so many countries, almost 17 countries uh, basically donating money to India so that they can uh, fulfill their needs uh, to fight against the COVID-19. So Norway is a very important country for you. Currency we already discussed that is uh, Kroners and uh, Kron or you can say uh, capitalist Oslo. And uh, you have to remember New Zealand because New Zealand is also donating so much money. New Zealand president is Jacinda Ardern, capital is Wellington and currency is New Zealand dollar. So guys, remember these things. Next, government of uh, National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Act, it, Delhi comes into force. So uh, this is a new act which was uh, recently amended uh, by the centre government. And now uh, they amended that according to legislation, the government in Delhi means the lieutenant or the lieutenant governor. It means from now onwards, government in Delhi stands for the lieutenant governor and elected government of New Delhi have to seek the opinion of the lieutenant governor before taking any executive action. This is a new bill which came into force in 2021. Earlier, the government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Act 1991 was in force. But now uh, the new Act 2021 came into force and it was passed by the parliament in March 2021. So you have to remember now government of Delhi stands for the lieutenant governor. Next, government retained the GPF interest rate unchanged by 7.1% for the quarter one financial year 22. So it is not so much important. It is basically a GPF fund. GPF stands for GPF stands for General Provident Fund and uh, uh, other non-governmental uh, provident fund, gratuity funds, interest rate will be unchanged. That will be the 7.1% and it is for the first quarter of the financial year 22. Remember this. Next, Wipro sets to reach net zero greenhouse gas emission by the 2040. This is a uh, target of the one company and it is on Earth Day that Wipro, the IT software major, announced its plan to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emission by the 2040 and it committed an intermediate target to achieve 55% reduction in the greenhouse gases by the 2030. This is the intermediate target that they will reduce 55% of the reduction in the greenhouse gases by the year of 2030. But in 2040, they will uh, fully complete this target and net zero emission green house gas emission uh, by the year of 2040. So you have to just remember this. Next, play true day. It is not so much important and it is uh, not asked in any exam, but it is a new kind of thing in the COVID-19 that play true day is annually observed uh, by the World Anti-Doping Agency or you can say the WADA. WADA in, uh, on uh, uh, April 9 to create awareness about the importance of protecting clean sport among the athletes, sporting public and others. It means you don't have to take any drug or any type of the medicine to play. So uh, it is just to uh, protect clean sport among the athletes, sporting uh, public and the others. And it was firstly observed, uh, you can say, um, in 2014 in 2014 and what is the theme of 2021 the theme is what does play true mean to you what does play true mean to you so uh, remember this just it just read this no uh, need to remember next supreme court justice mohan m mohan m Shanta Nagodraji passed away at the age of 63. So uh, he was uh, basically a justice of Supreme Court. So you have to just remember this and uh, you can just read this. And uh, uh, he was uh, just died at the age of 63 in Hare uh, Gurgaon, Haryana. And he was born in 1958 and hails from the North Karnataka. He was serving as a Supreme Court judge uh, from 2017 to 
2017 basically and he wa- he have to retire on 2023 the uh, retirement age is in 2023 but now he died so you have to remember justice mohan m shantanagodar and he started his career as a advocate in 1980 now he is a chief justice of supreme court so this is a very uh, you can say motivating thing for you now we can move to the uh, question and uh, it was the uh, yesterday's question question was very simple which was the first bank to introduce atm in india so very simple question if you are a banking aspirant then this question is not so much difficult and uh, answer of this question is hsbc hong kong and shanghai bank corporation whose headquarters in london uh, so uh, they established first atm in india in 1987 1987 and the location was in mumbai location was in mumbai so in the following uh, you can say the uh, so many years about uh, so many atms were set up in india and in 1997 the indian banking association like iba set up uh, swadhan or you can say the swadhan swadhan stands for the uh, uh, our money like swadhan our money or the self money so it is the first network of shared atms in india it was managed by the india switch company for 5 years and allowed card holders who have uh, atm cards to withdraw cash from any type of the atm in the network for for a some uh, nominal fee and if they uh, did not have an account with the bank uh, that owned the atm but if they have a uh, atm uh, uh, who have a uh, if they have a uh, basically card holder or you can say if they have a card of that bank who's who has a atm then there is no fee but if you have a card uh, but uh, uh, but the atm belongs to uh, any other bank then you have to pay some nominal fee it is basically a swadhan uh, program which is managed by the india switch company but in 2002 the network connected over 1000 atm of the 53 member bank of association Uh, association the network was capable of handling 2 lakh 50 thousand transactions per day but only 5 thousand transactions worth rupees 1 lakh rupees took place each day so icic bank network of about 640 atm handled transactions of so many amount and after the contract uh, with the isc expired like after 5 years indian banking association failed to find a bidder to manage the operationally uneconomical network and shut it down on the in 2003 so this is whole history of the swadhan one student asked that what is swadhan so you have to remember this it is basically swadhan it is a hindi word now we are moving to the question of the day what is the question original headquarter of rbi were located at so very simple question because originally headquarter was uh, at some way place but in 1937 it was shifted so you have to tell me which was the uh, original headquarter so guys tell me answer in the comment box but now this is very a bad day today so i am deeply shocked and saddened to hear heartbreaking news of uh, 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 senior journalist rohit sardana ji demise and he passed away uh, just today and uh, he was a very fearless and uh, straight forward journalist and uh, may his departed soul rest in peace it is uh, our uh, fierce cloud team and uh, i myself uh, uh, providing uh, sincere condolences so guys uh, um, rest in peace so no words for this person So guys please provide us 700 plus likes and please subscribe this channel please please uh, share this video as maximum as possible and you can press this bell button so that you can receive the notification on time and it is affairs cloud promise that it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely if you are reading the current affairs from the pdf and if you are watching the current affairs daily uh, from the videos then your current affairs section will go strong definitely you can subscribe our pdfs from the description box link you can download the application from the link and you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year but we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code h10 then you will definitely get the 10% extra discount and guys uh, don't take life so much serious life is fun life is beautiful but uh, be happy always because happiness is the key of success you can uh, see uh, so many people are currently living uh, uh, india because of covid 19 or you can say so many people are basically uh, not able to feed their family even uh, we are losing so many people due to uh, this covid 19 so uh, be safe always and uh, don't go outside always uh, be at home so that uh, you can be safe so this is my only request to you so guys thank you for watching this video and take care bye bye